So we've been in our rig now for a little over two weeks and it is time to do a RV tour. We're Heath and Alyssa. We started RVing during our honeymoon in 2014 and instantly fell in love with travel. We full-time RV'd for five years in the States before coming up with the crazy idea of RVing in foreign countries. In this series, we're RVing across Italy with our four-month-old daughter, Ellie. This is it. If you do rent from Anywhere Campers, all the rigs are the same. This RV is on a Citron chassis and it is a manual diesel engine, which means if you're coming from America, you should definitely learn how to drive a manual before you come over here, right? All the smart people who drive stick shift learn before you drive in the Italian mountainside. Slow, slow, slow. I'm going slow, man. I'm no. about to crap my pants. No, don't crap your pants, but slow down. Oh my God. As far as RVs go in Italy, this is on the bigger side, but it's also not the biggest we've seen. We've seen quite a bit larger RVs in Italy, not in width, but in height. This is a little over 24 feet long and it's about two and a half meters wide. And if you rent from a company like Anywhere Campers, then they'll actually place the height and width on your rear view mirror, which is very helpful because you will at some point go through a tunnel or a lot of tunnels in Italy. No, this is not even close, we're fine. John would hog if you Oh yeah, we're totally fine. You wanna walk around the side? So a couple things you'll notice about this rig is that it has these nice European windows that will just kind of flip out and they'll lock into place for us, which is very nice because we don't have AC on this unit. So we're here in October currently and we started going north into the Dolomite Mountains in Northern Italy. I know there's people behind me making faces and we haven't needed our AC at all. We're ending down on the Amalfi Coast and it will be a bit warmer, but because we're here in the later season, it's not gonna be very hot because these rigs don't come with AC. So that's just something that you should know about before you come over to Italy. You have to be very, there you go. They could require like finesse. <laughs> so we have the Truma Combi on this rig. It is the same that we had in New Zealand last year if you watched that series. So basically this is our heater and our hot water heater and it works extremely well. So our water gets hot very fast, it takes about maybe three to five minutes to, to warm up and then it's been really good for taking showers and things like that. And we've also turned on the heat a few times when we went into the mountains. We also have uh, GPL, which is basically your propane is what it's called here in Italy. And so we've had to fill that up once on a two week trip. And I would say we've been running our heater, not a lot, but just a few times, but we have been cooking almost every single day. So we have had to fill up once while we were on this trip. So one thing that we really liked about this rig is that it has a big rear storage garage because we brought a large suitcase. So we were able to shove it in the back. We also have two bikes in here, multiple lawn chairs, a grill that we never use, but it's plenty big enough to fit quite a bit of stuff. So if you're coming over and you need to throw a big suitcase in here, you're gonna be able to put that in there. Church bells ringing. That's good ambiance. As far as, <laughs> as far as electricity goes, it's kind of an interesting setup. So it's not quite 20 amp, I think. Is it 20 amp, John? The hookup is not quite 20 amp. I think it's like 15 is what they told us. So it actually, this plugs into this right here so it plugs in like so and then this plugs into our rv and then we have the extension cord and then this plugs into the box so it's kind of an interesting very different setup but it's been pretty straightforward and easy it seems works. complicated it is different right yeah so that's pretty much the only difference as far as the outside goes and then if we get in any hairy situation oh my gosh we do have this a hatchet so it looks actually like it's been fairly used i have no idea what for like i don't know if people are going off-roading or what but the rear storage garage has been great and the bikes have worked really well we did have a bike rack on the back of the rig but they told us to be safe in cities and whenever we were camping to leave the bikes in here which is actually really good because today we actually had an attempted break-in on the rv which you'll see in one of our vlogs just got back to our rv and somebody clearly tried to, to break into the door. The same thing happened to Peter and John's RV, so we don't know if anything was stolen. He just came back and said they cleaned us out, so I don't know if they cleaned out their rig. Don't film, don't film it, don't film it. Uh, this is our water fill right here. We have went, I think our longest is four or five days without filling up with water, and it's worked out really well. So that's with doing dishes, occasionally like very quick showers and things like that, but it's got a decent sized tank that we've used for, for boondocking for several days at a time. We do have an awning that comes out, standard European RV awning uh, that you see that you may have seen on a lot of different RVs. 
And what we have on this rig is very common in Italy, which is a cassette toilet. I'm pretty sure most of the RVs over here have this same toilet, which basically will last you about a day or two, depending on how often you use the bathroom. So you just, to empty it, I'm gonna grab gloves, even though for this demonstration. <laughs> So if you've never seen a cassette toilet before, basically how it works is that you just pick up, lift out of here, and then it, from this point, it basically acts as a carry-on suitcase like you're in an airport, except you're dumping your toilet at a campground. What you wanna do whenever you're dumping one of these is every time at a dump, you will also fill this up with water. There'll be a little hose at the dump and you'll wanna shake it up and then put it back in here. And this specific rental came with a little, uh, little smell good things that you can dump in here afterwards. Chemical, deodorant, whatever you wanna call it. But you wanna put one of those after you dump it each time. I will say that the cassette toilet hasn't really smelled unless we forgot to put the deodorant in there. So it hasn't been a big deal and it's fairly easy to dump and each Campeggio that we've stayed at so far has a dump for this. It's basically just a large toilet. One thing that's different about this RV versus the rig that we had in New Zealand was that the gray tank, the gray spout is about the same size, but there's no actual dumping hose to connect to it. Whenever you dump your gray, you have to literally go up on top of the dump or back up to it, and then you'll turn this nozzle. We have gray water, so I'm not gonna pull it, but you just basically rotate it um, 90 degrees and then the gray water will come out. Okay, so we're gonna go inside, but first, this screen door right here has been extremely helpful because while we've been in Italy, especially as we get closer to the coast, sometimes the mosquitoes have been really bad, so we keep this closed a lot. Let's go inside. So Alyssa and I have spent a good amount of time in this size motorhome, a little more than 24 feet, and this is my ideal layout as far as the kitchen table goes. We'll start here because it is really, really big for this size of an RV. And we've been hanging out with our good friends, John and Peter, and all five of us have been here at the table, including Ellie's car seat. And it's been plenty big enough because this right here slides up and it pops into place. I don't want the wine bottle to fall off, but it's a really good size table for multiple people. So depending on how many people are gonna be traveling with, it works really, really well. Before we get into anything else on the interior, one thing that I wanted to talk about specifically because it's been a really big part of our trip to Italy is actually right up here in the front, which is the fact that this is a manual RV. Other than that, it is a diesel RV and it does have what is called AdBlue over here, which is the equivalent of Def Fluid. So it's something that you'll need to monitor throughout your trip to make sure that it doesn't get too low because that's not something that you wanna go without. One thing we've done as soon as we got to each of our campsites for the evening is open up all of these windows. And this one in particular has been really nice because it flips up and then you can lock it into place and you get a nice breeze flowing in from the top. We have a little bit of storage up here, which has been good for things like my safari hat, chargers, and things like that. The last thing that I'll mention up here in the front is the way that these windows work are actually brilliant and I love it because they're attached to the windshield and then they lock into place like so. And they have the same thing on each of the driver and the passenger side windows. And so it really gives you a lot of privacy whenever you're parking either in a Campeggio or an agritourism site, or if you're just parked on the side of the road and you wanna make sure that all your windows are closed. These are amazing. One thing we were really concerned about before we came over was being able to fit Ellie's car seat up here in the front. So if you do happen to be traveling with a baby, specifically if they need a rear facing car seat, there is room right here to put one. And the company Anywhere Campers, we contacted them before this trip and we asked if they had a car seat for us to rent during our one way rental from Venice to Rome. And they actually did have a car seat, but it was only the front facing, which Ellie cannot be in yet. So either way, you will be able to put a car seat here if you need it. By the way, we decided to just leave our leftover cheese, wine, and crackers on the table because we're in Italy, so why not? Moving on to our tour, I want to talk about storage real quickly because we have been buying our groceries. There's been a lot of really good grocery stores, specifically the one that we've went to the most in this region of Italy has been called Co-op, but we filled up all of our cabinets. So we have storage here, here, and then over here. All pretty standard storage, good size. This fits a full cereal box, if that matters to you. <laughs> Here we have a good size kitchen, three burner stove, 
The rental comes with an espresso maker. Thank you, Anywhere Campers. I appreciate that. And you can buy espresso in any grocery store anywhere in Italy because that's a crucial part of your Italian RVing experience. And then the one thing that we have here in this rig, which is really nice, is actually a pretty decent sized sink. And then underneath you have storage for pots and pans and all that comes with your rental as well as cutlery. We have a three-way fridge here, so whenever we're not hooked up to electric, it switches over to propane and we use that. And more importantly, in the freezer, if you buy gelato in bulk like us, you can fit a good size container of gelato in the freezer. You should not have revealed that that was in there. Now you're gonna lose it as soon as I'm done filming. Oh man, okay. So, good size fridge, works on board. Up here, we'll move on to this, which is basically all of our readings for the RV. So here we have our fresh water, which is currently giving me 0%, uh, but it's actually at 100 right now, so maybe that doesn't work all of the time. Red is at 0%, which is our gray water. One thing I really love about this is that I can tap this reader and it'll show me the inside temperature and the outside temperature. That's something that in our, our Winnebago rig, we always loved being able to see the outside temp and the inside. I'm not sure why as RVers were fascinated by what's the temp outside versus inside, but I use it every single morning. And then we can also turn on our water pump and everything from up here. And this is where you can control your furnace and your hot water heater. And to a really important part of the rig, the shower. It's a really good size shower in this RV. We've used it multiple times. And with the Truma, you have a lot of hot water, which is really nice. And one thing that's a little bit unique about this shower is there's like a little bitty seat in there, which actually I've used a couple times when I've been in the shower. Just sit down, relax. The shower head is also really good too for like a built-in RV shower head. I don't know if this is one that comes standard, doesn't matter, it's been really good. The shower doors are kind of unique too. I've never seen RV shower doors like this, but they go out. So you actually have a decent bit of room. Onto the bathroom. Pretty standard sized bathroom in here. We have, You have a sliding mirror with a good amount of storage in here, which is really nice. And this window, actually, these shades will go up and down. And that's the same throughout the whole rig. So when they get some good airflow, you can open that up. If you want some privacy, close it. It's a bathroom. And last but not least, the bedroom, which comes complete with a sleeping five-month-old baby which is why I'm talking a little bit more softly than I was probably earlier in this video because Ellie is sleeping in the back. So, you wanna turn around? Look how cute she is. I'm gonna try to finish this tour in the bedroom without waking up our five-month-old daughter, Ellie, who is passed out back here. So I'm gonna be a little bit quiet, but I'm going to walk through and then share with you what the bedroom of this rig is gonna look like. So in the back of the RV, we have two twin beds on either side, right above the... She's waking up. Behind me in this rig, we have two different twin beds and that you can connect them together to make one massive king size bed. What we've actually done is taken the middle part out and put Ellie's topper in there to make kind of a little bassinet thing for her. So that way she is secure while we're all sleeping together. And we have a decent bit of storage above the bed and then below it as well for a lot of different clothes and shoes and everything. So this is the bedroom. It's been really nice, a little bit small for three people, but it's been great for exploring Italy. Mm -hmm.